We're going to talk about cosine and sine and how they relate to the unit circle. So just to remind you again, remember what the unit circle is. It's a circle that has a radius of 1. So when we overlay our x and y coordinates on them, that makes it minus 1 and minus 1. And now we're finally going to start using this. So this is going to be the idea. And remember that angles start here, 0, and they go up like this. So they go counterclockwise. Now, it depends if we do things in radians or in degrees. We're going to be doing things in radians, so we talk about, remember, pi is to the left here. So I like this here. Oh, God, when will it end? A pie eating contest. Get it? Because it's irrational. It never ends. Oh. All right, so let's look at cosine and sine. So again, with our 1 here and our minus 1 and our 1 here and our minus 1. This is on x and y. Remember, if we do any old angle, let's just say uh, I have an angle, let's say like uh, this, some sort of random angle that goes up like this. So if I finish here, I have some angle theta here that I've gone up by, or sort of around by. Here's the problem. If I want to do the um, sine and cosine, well, I'm going to, I'm going to show you a trick of how they're related to the x and the y coordinates. Because this right here, if I put this random place right here, turns out this right here has an x coordinate. Right? This one here has some sort of x coordinate and a y coordinate. Right? It's got some x here, some y that it corresponds to. Well, it turns out uh, this is actually the, the really important part, is that the xy coordinates, those correspond to cos theta, whoops, I don't know why I can't seem to spell here, x is cos theta and y is sine theta. This is the key to doing this. So this here is, is the really, really important part, okay, maybe I'll even write it down like this. I'll say so, x equals cos theta, this is the important part, y equals the sine of theta. This is the key to doing it. Because what we're going to do then, we're going to be looking at angles and seeing where does the angle finish. So does it finish up or left or down or whatever. And it turns out the x values are the cosine of the angle and the y value is the sine, which will be a really quick trick. So we can get a lot of these exact values really, really fast by just looking at the unit circle. Uh, now how do you remember which one is which? This is kind of dumb, but... I think that Y kind of rhymes with sine. I mean, not quite, but it has an I sound in it, at least. Y, sine, kind of. And then cos is just the other one. That's at least how I remember it. It's dumb, but it works for me. So let's see if we can put this together. So uh, we're going to take a look at this in here. We're going to practice the easy exact values, the easier ones, which are multiples of pi or pi over 2. By the way, <laughs> I love this from South Park. If you get to set your to calculate degrees, you're going to have a rad time because it's supposed to be bad, but get it? You're going to be in radians. Ooh, that's good. I like that one. Um, so let's take a look here. Here's what you do. Step one, you draw it. Look at where the angle actually finishes. Like, look where it ends. I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. And after that, remember that cos theta is x, sine theta is y. Let's see if we can do the exact value of cos of zero radians. So let's first of all start by drawing that. What does an angle of zero radians look like? Remember, this is my x, this is my y, here's my circle. And if I do this, remember it's a unit circle. This is 1, this is 1, this is minus 1, and this is minus 1. Remember, okay, that's the key here. So if I have a 0 degrees or even 0 radians, it doesn't matter. That means we finish to the right. Okay, so this is the key thing. It goes exactly to the right. That's the key for zero radians. It goes to the right. Now, remember, cos is the x value. So here's the x value. And at, you know, when it's going to the right like this, what's the value here? x is 1. Therefore, the answer is just 1. Let's look at the sine. At this point right here, sine, remember, is the y. What's the y value right here? Well, you're right on the x-axis. You're not up above. The y value is actually 0. So see how fast that was? Let's take a look and see if we can do some more just to practice. So let's find the exact value of cos of pi. Well, I guess first we need ourselves an x, y axis here, and we need you know, our unit circle like this right here. I'm actually going to stop even drawing the circle. I'm just going to draw the angles. So I want an angle of pi. What does that mean? That means it's an angle that goes all the way across like this and finishes right here. Here is where I finish, right here. That's where I am. Remember, though, the values. Remember, this is negative 1. Up here is 1. Up here is 1. Down here is negative 1. Remember, it's a circle that goes all the way around. So, when, so since we finished to the left, let's look at cosine. Remember, cosine is the 
x value. So the x value at this angle here of pi, the x value must be negative 1. That's why it's just negative 1. If I asked you for the sine here, you'd see the sine was 0. So those are the multiples of pi or 0, I guess, technically. Let's do some more. Let's do uh, the exact value for sine of 3 pi over 2. Let's do that one. So again, we're just going to do a drawing, aren't we? Just like this, like this. Remember, this is x, this is y. I need to draw my angle of 3 pi over 2. So that's going to be, let's see. Well, I need to think about this is 3 times the multiple of pi over 2. So I'm going to need an angle of pi over 2 first to think about. So this is what pi over 2 looks like. This is 1 pi over 2. Well, then this must be 2 pi over 2, so this must be 3 pi over 2. It finishes here. Here is where it finishes. That is what 3 pi over 2 looks like. Now remember, though, this is on a unit circle, so that means this is 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. So what's my sine value? Remember the sine is the y value. So what's the y value down here? It's negative 1. Hopefully that made sense. That's why this is negative 1. And because that's the y value that's down here. It's straight down. I just didn't draw my unit circle here, but I should have. So, um, actually, maybe I'll just draw like this. I'll just draw a circle going all the way across just so you can see everything. Right? This is 1, this is 1, this is negative 1, and this is negative 1. That's why. Let's do it. The exact value of cos of 5 pi. Uh-oh, that sounds complicated. So what do we do now? We have x, we have y. We have a circle right here, right? I'll just draw my circle. Maybe it's easier to still keep drawing it. So 1, 1, negative 1 here, and negative 1. Now I want to do an angle of 5 pi. What does that look like? Well, if I go across to the left, remember that's 1 pi. So this then must be 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi. So this is where I finish. I finish to the left, so to speak. So that's where I am here. I finish here. Now what do I want? I want the cosine. Cosine is the x value. What's the x value here? Negative 1. Boom. If I want the sine, it would be 0. All right. Uh, let's do this one here. Sine of negative 5 pi over 2. Uh-oh. So what am I going to do here? Well, I'm going to start by drawing it, of course. I think you're getting used to seeing me do this already. X's and Y's. I go 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. And this time, what I'm going to do is start counting by, well, I've got five of these pi over 2 things, so I'm going to count first of all pi over 2. Normally I would go up to go to pi over 2, but because it's negative, I go opposite way. So that means I'm going to go, this right here is negative 1 pi over 2. Remember, because all the way across is always pi. That's the only thing I have memorized is all the way across this way or all the way across this way is pi. Well, then half of it then is pi over 2, right? So I have negative pi over 2. That's negative 1 pi over 2, sorry. Then I've got negative 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2. So it's 5 pi over 2. Therefore, I finish straight down. So I'm going to do this one here. I draw this right here. I finish straight down. And sine is the y value. What's the y value down here? Oh, it's also negative 1. So do you notice then what happens here? I mean, these just happen to all be negative 1s. They could be whatever. Okay, but just to try to show you. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 2. But we went backwards because we went negative. That was the key part, remember? So this one here, we went counterclockwise. So this, uh, oh, sorry, this way we actually went clockwise. That was the key here because it was negative, right? We went the opposite direction. Normally, we always go this way. We always go that way. We always go that way. In this case, we went that way. Whoa. All right. Um, last thing I want to show you was with the quadrants. We have these different quadrants. We call them 1, 2, 3, 4. These are the places on the x, y coordinate plane here. And where things finish are going to be important. This is going to be the key here, OK? I'm going to show you this a lot, but I'll just start it here this time. So we have a little thing here that tells us that Depending on where it finishes, we can know something about the cosine or the sine. Like we, we know something about the value. So we have a little trick here. I learned it was called cast, like C-A-S-T. Although that's 
weird because you have to start off in quadrant four to do the C. So cast is what I learned it. However, some of my students, they liked it better. They said, start off with quadrant one here, say A-S-T-C, like all students take calculus or some sort of way to remember that. But you got to be able to know A-S-T-C like this. What does this stand for? This means all are positive. What do I mean by that? That means cos. If something finishes in this quadrant, cos is positive. Sine is positive and tan is positive. Here, however, only sine is positive. So that means cos is negative here. Sine is positive and tan is negative. So that's the key here. So sine, sine is positive here. Here all were positive. Here tan, that's what this here means. So, so this is tan is the only one that's positive. Here, only cos is positive. So in this case, what does that mean? That means cos is negative, sine is negative, but tan is positive here in this quadrant, if you finish down here. Over here, cos is positive, sine is negative, and tan is also negative. So really, this trick, C-A-S-T, it kind of tells you that all are positive, only sine is positive, only tan is positive, only cosine is positive. So that's sort of the, I guess you could say it's a main key thing here. Now let's take a look at how this is going to affect some of these different identities here, that cos A, for example, is cos negative A. What do we mean by that? Let me just draw some generic angle here. This is my x's and y's. If I have some generic A, some generic angle here, so let me just draw some angle A. Well, the cosine is the x value, isn't it? So the x value of this one right here, which is right here, that's the that's cos of a. It's this whatever value that is. You see that they say it's the cos of negative a as well. In other words, watch this. What if I did an angle of negative a? An angle of negative a would go down here, wouldn't it? Like this right here, it would be negative a. And can you see this one right here will be the same thing? So they're trying to show you that the cosine of a in other words, the x value for this angle A is going to be the same thing as the x value for this negative A here. So that's that's this one shown. Well, same thing for sine, because sine is the y value. Remember, this, this is the x value. This is the y values. Right, so these are the x values. These are the y values. Let's see if this one here makes sense. So we have sine of A. What does that mean? That means the y value for A. Maybe I'll do it in a different color here just to show you. So here we have the y value for A here. What we're saying is it's going to be the same thing as if we did this sine value of negative a right here, except it's negative. See, so whatever, like let's say this is like a one, this would be a negative one. So they're just trying to show both of these. They're sort of shown here. Now we have this sine of an angle plus a is same thing as negative sine of a. Let's see if this will make any sense. I'm just trying to show you a few little identities we can play with here, just to try to show you what we can do. X's and y's. Let's see. I need a sine of an angle plus a. Uh, sorry, pi plus a. Well, what's pi? Pi is already over here. Remember, pi is already to the left here. So pi starts off here. Remember, I've already gone over by pi. Now I have to do plus some angle. So I'm going to do pi plus a. Let's say, so maybe it's this angle right here. So see, I've done pi. I've gone over by pi, and then a little bit extra, that's a. And here I go, and I finish here. And what's my sine? Sine is the y value, isn't it? That's the y value, that's the sine. So let's look at this, the y value is right here. Okay, it's whatever that value is. Now let's look at what happens here. If I do this one right here though, and they say, what's a negative sine of a, what would that be? Well, that means if I do this angle normally of a, this might be a little bit complicated seeming, but if I do an angle like this right here of a, like this right here, whoosh, I go up here, this right here would be my value right here. So I'd be looking at this compared to this one down here. Okay, this one down here. I'm looking at these two values. And look, this one right here is equal to negative what that one was. Look, this one down here is exactly the same uh, distance as this one is, except this one's negative. It's just a few different tricks just to try to show you these identities. Don't get too tripped up by these. The key thing is to remember that if something finishes up here, Cosine, sine, and tangent are all positive up here. Over here, just sine is positive. Over here, tan is positive. Over here, cos is positive. That's what you need.